welcome to the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider of the Memphis Tiger Network. I'm Jeff Bright alongside head coach Darren Sean Rock and coach, you know, a big win Monday night, but it was a pretty good week last week. So let's let's go back and start with the midweek series last week against Arkansas Pine Bluff. Uh, grind it out, maybe not the prettiest game on Tuesday, but those are the games you got to win. Those are the games that add up at the end of the year if you're going to be in position uh, for any kind of postseason. Then a, a pretty pretty solid, clean game in the second game of that uh, two-game series. Yeah, you know, with the, that Tuesday night game against Pine Bluff, we were coming off a sweep of UCF. And so it was, you didn't know what, what a young club was going to do, how they're going to handle that. Um, very good opponent we just swept, and you always worry about those. And we didn't, we didn't play a real clean game. We didn't make a few plays. We didn't execute some things offensively. Uh, Michael kept us in there enough to, to, you know, hang some goose eggs and get the win for us. And, and, uh, and then Wednesday came back and, and kind of, you know, caught focus a little bit. So that was good, good lessons learned. You know, good thing you didn't, you didn't have to take a loss to learn a lesson there. And so I was happy with that at the end of that. And then, then uh, you know, going into UAB, I had a good feeling. Well, you guys were on a roll rolling into UAB. Uh, you ended up playing a doubleheader Saturday because of the rain that was going to come in Sunday. But you go back to uh, Friday night, Sam Ball gave you a solid start. Jonathan Van Eaton came in to finish it off. And big story of that game, Jonathan Van Eaton uh, got his, his record save at the University of Memphis, the all-time saves leader. Yeah, so, you know, saves are a, a difficult thing. You're, you're in a lot of pressure moments. It takes a physical, it's a physical preparation as much as it is a mental because having the ability to go out there and do your craft at a high, high level multiple times a week. And, and uh, very few high school kids are accustomed coming into school, coming into college, they're accustomed to being in that role. Most, you know, 99% of the pitchers we signed in college baseball were all high school starters, pitched once a week, had physical preparation time between starts. Now you put somebody in a closer role and you say, I want you to get on the mound and get guys out twice, three times a week and do it at a high level over 56 games. So there's some physical adjustments which Jonathan has made and then the mental adjustments and, and uh, I think those two go hand in hand with him. Well, you, you coach both the, uh, the top two relievers as far as closing now. You coach Matt Yokely back in uh, 06, 07, 08 and now you get Jonathan Van Eaton. So you can see the kind of the correlations. They're a little bit two different type of person. Matt was kind of more of a laid back guy as far as mentality off the field. Jonathan Van Eaton is one of those really tightly wound believers that, that kind of fit into that role. Yeah, that, you know, we kind of groomed Matt that from the day he got on campus his freshman year. Uh, he had a swing and miss slider. So, you know, he, he went through some physical bumps and bruises, you know, had some shutdown time with his elbow, came back, grinded through three years. Jonathan was a, you know, we weren't sure when he came out of high school. We, uh, he got hurt right at the beginning or the end of his summer of his, of his before his freshman season. So he, he missed his whole first year. We weren't really sure at that point we're going to make a reliever out of you. We thought maybe this guy could start. And then as we got around Jonathan Moore and saw his mentality, we knew it was more fitting to be a reliever. Coach, uh, Saturday you played a doubleheader and Eric Schoenrock, outstanding. Uh, complete game, set you up pretty well. And boy, we, we talked about how good this pitching staff has been this year statistically. It's the best in Conference USA. And really as the Saturday guy, he has been the guy, the, the leader on this pitching staff. You know what you're going to get every single he, game to start. Been, he's been consistent. And Saturday's usually that, you know, we, you look at the, the importance of Saturday games. They're tough games. Uh, the Friday night guy has the benefit of knowing that his team behind him is charged up, ready to start a series, under the lights. Uh, stuff is a little tougher to see. Mm -hmm. Saturday is a grinded out game, uh, a day game after a night game. Uh, guys see your stuff a little bit better. You know, you have the, you're pitching in sunlight <coughs> instead of, instead of uh, artificial yeah. lights. And, and he's been very consistent. He hasn't been uh, just, as, you know, he hasn't been dominant as some, some starts around the league, uh, you know, but he's been pretty much the same guy every week and gives us a chance to win. And, and we've, we've really, done some pretty neat things offensively for him behind him you know we've had some of our biggest offensive outputs uh behind him which gives him a cushion and lets him pitch but 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 you know to hand it to him it, he's he's done a fine job you come back in game three in that doubleheader i know you lost a tough one there in the bottom of the night the uh, uab was able to win it you had a 5-1 lead and that was kind of a hiccup for the bullpen it's been pretty good for you this year they've been great and and those guys just all you know, they, they pitched at the belt a little bit. They didn't grab momentum back. You know, UAB got a little momentum with some mislocated pitches and, and snuck a few singles out. They were, they were not a real power-laden team. And it got them charged up enough to get back to their bunny game a little bit and, and uh, 
came from behind for that win. But that that you know that's a lesson learned that you've got to locate and you've got to make you got to command the pitches against regardless of what the score is and who it is. I mean, college baseball hitters with aluminum bats in their hands are going to hit mistakes. Well, the, the best thing is you get two out of three at UAB. It's very difficult, as we know, in this league, uh, which is a power baseball conference, to get sweeps. So you're, you're happy to get two out of three on the road. Happy to get two out of three on the road. And, and uh, you know, we've got we to gotta kind of take, take advantage of some opportunity somewhere to get that other one back. And, and you know, we've got some, some tough things left in front of us with this team. But this team, again, is doing a phenomenal job of just, hey, today is what we got. And, uh, and that's, what, that's what we have to approach this. Well, you, you worked the day off on Sunday, and you came back Monday night with a big win over Ole Miss for nothing. So you sweep Ole Miss for the season series, and Michael Wills. It's just uh, that's that's the team that uh, he, he's pitched well here against a lot of people, but that's the uh, the team he really rises to the occasion too. It's a second win, and I believe in in uh, his outings now. He's two and zero with a one six seven ERA. He's you know Michael's kind of come into his own and learned who he is as a pitcher and. He's not trying to be anybody but Michael Wills, and, and uh, that's a big, big, important lesson to learn. And you know, it's something you obviously you expect out of a fifth-year senior. It's hard to expect a freshman to be like that. It, it, Michael's, uh, you know, he's kind of evolved into who he is, and and it matches up well with him. It matches up well with teams coming off of weekends where they face a lot of power arms and a lot of hard stuff. He's a front-to-back guy, and and if he pitches down. Uh, like he did last night, uh, he, he, phenomenal, phenomenal outing. And, and, uh, and then he's got a little slider that he's added to the report now that, that he's using to get in on some right-handed hitters with. And the changeup's been there, you know, that's been his bread and butter pitch since he came out of high school when we, when we brought him here. So uh, I know um, he, he, you know, everybody wants the limelight of pitching in conference play on the weekends and all that, but Michael's been a, just a bell cow for us in those midweek outings, and, and uh, he's, a, he's gonna be a huge reason when the dust settles at the end of the year, uh, the, the success that this team can have. You know, conference play in the weekends are great, but those midweek games, they're really the games that are gonna either get you in or keep you out when they all add up at the end. And, and with that win, that makes you six and one against the SEC. And I know we still have 18, 19 games left, but that is a huge uh, uh, star on the resume uh, if you're in position at the end of the year, maybe to get into a regional. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of factors. You know, who knows if, is it strength of schedule? Is it RPI? Is it quality wins? Is it bad losses? You know, there, there's still so many uh, theories on formulas on, on what does get you in, you know, and, and one thing that we control is just the number of wins. Yeah. We can't really control from this point on uh, our strength of schedule or who we play or, or all that. We just control the number of wins. And, and uh, when the dust settles, this team's going to have a good number of wins. If we can continue the pitch and make plays, and, and, and keep elevating who we are offensively. You know, we still have, we still have moments where I get frustrated with, yeah. with our inability to execute a few things. And I look out there and it's a freshman and a sophomore and a sophomore and another freshman. And you know, so it's, I go, well, these guys are coming along slowly, but a lot more opportunities that will await us in the future against great competition. We've got a tough league schedule the second half, uh, still have a Mississippi State uh, midweek game an Austin P midweek game that are both leaders in their leagues right now. Uh, so we got a lot of tough challenges ahead of us, but this team is is grinding out the the second half of the season. Coach, Southern Miss comes in this week. They're a game ahead of you in first place. They're a team that was uh, ranked in the preseason, got off to a, a decent start, then experienced some troubles. But here the last two weeks, they have gotten it back. They've put together a good little streak. So they're going to, you and, and Southern Miss are going to be the two hottest teams in the league. Uh, facing off this weekend at FedEx Park. They're very hot, Jeff, and they, they've, got a, they've got a lot more returning veterans in key roles than we do. Uh, they, they're, you know, two-thirds of their rotation is back, uh, conference, all-conference pitcher back, um, you know, uh, most of their lineup returning. So they, they've got, you know, they've got more of what you expect. They're going more like what you expect them to go like. So uh, uh, challenges is, are, are good. The, the, the encouraging thing is we have them at home, and uh, we've started to kind of, you know, understand the importance of what home turf is and feel comfortable at home. We got to we got to make life uncomfortable for them at home and and uh, and their their solid weekend rotation and and you know, our, our that's going to be the challenge for our young hitters. And then next Tuesday night, you're back down at AutoZone Park against Mississippi State a Club that did that you had a coach with with Ron Polk and that'll be kind of a neat doubleheader. We've done that before where the Redbirds play an afternoon game, and you'll play the 6:30 game. Yeah, and that's a that's a neat thing. All the tickets for that are going to be handled through the Redbirds and and uh, the, the good thing is, you know, we, we, we have a, uh, the, the, it's a, 
it's a substantial rental fee to pay to play down there, and, and the Redbirds are nice enough that night to they control the tickets, but they don't charge us. So, so it's a good evening. It, it should be a good night, uh, like last night was for for fans from both schools to come down and you know see their teams in action in beautiful downtown Memphis. It was a wonderful atmosphere and evening last night, and, and uh, we expect the same for the Mississippi State game. All right, Coach, we'll talk to you this weekend out at FedEx Park. Thanks, Jeff. That is head coach Darren Schoenrock, and I'm Jeff Brightwell for the Wolf Chase Toyota Insider on the Memphis Tiger Network.